Hello, my YouTube friends. If you're a Google Meet user and you want a more dynamic broadcast for your viewers, I have the perfect solution for you today. I'll show you how to use OBS video and audio for your Google Meetings to really take it to another level. So let's get to it. <laughs> If you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss any new content. Educators and businesses are using Google Meet to teach classes, schedule meetings, and webinars more and more these days. It makes perfect sense to want to have the utility of OBS Studio to be able to add elements to your broadcast, like multiple cameras, lower thirds, media sources, and of course, sharing screen applications. And it's really easy to do. So let's jump into the computer and set this up. On this page, you want to scroll down and find the Windows installer. You can choose either the installer or the zip file. It really makes no difference. I just download the installer. And once it's on my computer, I just browse to the location of that installer. And I'm going to double click it and run it. Now I'm going to have all kind of weird glitches and errors when I'm doing this because it's already on my machine and I'm using OBS to actually record the screen. So it's running and on my machine already. So I'm going to be skipping a lot of this, but it's going to go smoothly for you if you don't have it on there or if you're not running OBS and you shouldn't have any problems. You just agree to it, install it to the default location and all that kind of stuff and you'll be all set. Once it's finished, if you did not have it on your machine before, you should definitely click restart your machine. The links for all these applications are in the description. You won't have to hunt around for them. You can just click them and it will take you right there. The next one we're going to install is the New Tech NDI. Now this plugin is basically going to create a bridge from the NDI source coming out of your OBS and allow it to be used as a camera source in Microsoft Teams. And it's really easy to install. And we're going to click on NDI here in the menu and we're going to select NDI tools. And we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom of this page and click NDI tools for Windows. Then you just have to fill out this brief summary, tell them you're not a robot and click submit. Once you click submit, it comes up with this little message here and you just click the highlighted link button and it's going to download the NDI tools to your download location. Then all we have to do is browse to that location, double click it and run it and accept the agreement, click next and here you're going to see the installation and you're probably going to want to make sure you have full installation selected. You definitely want to scroll through this. Make sure studio monitor is selected as well. But the most important piece of this is the virtual input. You want to make sure that's selected. If you want your virtual input to always be running, you can click run at Windows start. I do not have it clicked because I like to turn it off and run bare bones as much as possible, especially if I'm editing or live streaming but you may not be doing that on your machine, so you may not care if it runs all the time. And it's really not a big deal. Once you have everything selected that you need, you can click next and install. And of course, I'm gonna have lots of goofy things telling me that my install is going weird, and that's because I'm already running OBS and recording with it. So I'm just going to ignore all these error messages. You're not going to have this problem if you've never had NDI installed on your system. It's just a problem with the fact that I'm running it at the same time as I'm trying to install it. Once you're finished with that, I highly recommend that you reboot your machine. This video is sponsored by Restream.io. Restream allows you to broadcast to multiple social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Twitch all at the same time. And it's super easy to set up. And if you don't want to deal with the complexity of OBS, but you still want to have a great dynamic stream, try out Restream Studio. And yes, using Restream Studio, you can still broadcast to all your favorite social media platforms at the same time. So check it out. The links are in the description. Here we are in OBS and I want to show you I have two scenes set up, one with just me, one with a little bit of a video in the background. So that's what we're going to be using. I'm going to go up here to tools in the top left hand corner and I'm going to select NDI output settings. Then I'm going to check main output and you can set your main output name to anything. I just set mine to OBS and I click OK. Now I am going to go into my programs. I'm going to scroll down to NDI for tools and I'm going to select the virtual input. 
and it doesn't look like it does anything. But down here in the bottom right, I can see the NDI virtual input. I'm going to right click on it and just make sure that OBS is checked next to main. And you can see here that you can actually change the resolution of the video if you want to. There really isn't any need, but just so you know, you can. Then I'm gonna go into Google Meet and I'm going to select new meeting and I'm gonna start an instant meeting. Then the little three dots on the right hand side of the window, I'm going to click and go to settings. And I want to make sure that my audio is line new tech NDI and my video is new tech NDI video. And I'm going to go ahead and change my resolution here to 720. That's the highest resolution you can do. And I just want to go in and make sure that my speakers are the default audio I'm going to be using, whether that's speakers or probably headphones, if you're going to be adding a guest. And you can see when I talk, the three dots next to the microphone work. So that means we're definitely getting audio. Now I can exit out of that and then just click join now. This brings up the information that I can copy out and I can send this to all my friends so they can join the meeting. And now we're ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and reorganize the screen. We're gonna put Google Meet on the right hand side and our OBS on the left hand side. The first thing you're going to notice is that Google Meet is mirrored. And for some reason, this is just the way Google does it. I don't really understand it, but just so you know, what you're seeing in the OBS scene on the left-hand side is what your viewers are going to see. Unfortunately, Google doesn't give us any way to unmirror it so we can see what the broadcast is going to see through Google Meet. I don't know why that is, but Microsoft Teams works the exact same way. There's nothing we can do about it because they haven't given us an unmirror button. When I switch back and forth between these two scenes, you can see there's almost no latency. It happens just about at the exact same time. It's absolutely fantastic. This really works well and it looks great in our Google Meet. What's your favorite conferencing app? Zoom, Teams, Google Meet? Let me know in the comments. And if you're struggling with lagging video or audio issues for your live streams, one of these videos is gonna help you work through the most common issues. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.